Hello and welcome to the first tutorial in a series of tutorials that we'll be doing. Um, this particular one is about using the pen tool to make selections on your paintings. Um, we'll cover a lot of other things in future tutorials like using masks and um, some, some painting techniques that we use, but um, this is a technique that I use uh, to mask out areas of the painting that I want to isolate so I don't bleed into other areas. So um, if I'm using the brush tool, okay, so on the pen tool, if I'm doing this and I want to stay inside the lines, um, the problem is, see that, you know, my line might not be super great might not be as crisp as I need, so I need to keep going in and like feather it up and it's, you know, you don't want to have to be thinking this hard when you're painting. You just want to be getting in there with broad strokes and obviously you can't do that because then you go outside the lines and as they taught you when you're a kid that you're not meant to do that. So, the pen tool is a bit weird unless you've used it, say, in Illustrator or something like that. Um, but it is super effective at getting a clean line um, and it's very it, it's, a, it's a very accurate tool um, and it will allow you to do quite a lot with your edge control it takes a little bit getting used to I will admit um, but it's great for it's, it's great to be able to use instead of say the lasso tool, lasso tool where you'd have to you know carefully drag around and you know the line that you get, isn't going to be very clean like you look at that and it's a little bit jaggy over here and over here it's not great um, whereas if you're using the pen tool you'll find that you'll get a much nicer line overall now um, a quick tip um, before you get into using the pen tool was I did this quick rough um, underline drawing um, before I started vi uh, filming um, so basically I just did this so I could get the overall form and shape of the composition of the painting um, before I went and tightened it up. So you're going to want a tight line though before you start using the pen tool because you're going to be able to you're going to want to be able to figure out where exactly you're putting the lines and you want it to be accurate obviously if you want to get a good line. Um, and if you've got this furry mess like I do here, um, it's going to you're going to be you know using the pen tool and trying to trace along and you're like well which part of this big fat line do I want to do I want to, you know, use as my reference, um, you know, and you've got all these fairy bits around the outside and it's a very bad drawing technique on my behalf, but you have to forgive me. That's why I did not show you me doing it. I just skipped straight to this perfectly nice clean line drawing. So yeah, so I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool now. Um, basically the theory I've sort of stuck with is you want to add a um, anchor point every 180 degrees. So 180 degrees will say on a circle of this eyeball would be start here and then the next point would be there and then we'd go back to the start again and then we'd be able to create a whole circle. Um, don't worry about what what um, keys I'm using just yet. I will in fact tell you um, in just a moment. So yeah, there you go. I made a sort of a weird circle. Generally I wouldn't use the pen tool to make a circle but that's just an example. So if you want to make an anchor point every 180 degrees so like for instance this outside line here you'd start here and then you would make another anchor point here so to use pen tool um, I'm going to be using a lot of hotkeys and I'll try and keep saying what I'm doing as I do it uh, so you know which keys I'm using and then you can get used to it and you become a lot more efficient of using hotkeys um, I'm using a Cintiq um, you may be using some sort of um, Cintiq or Intuos or drawing tablet or whatever. Um, I highly recommend using a drawing tablet if you're going to be doing digital painting. I, I honestly don't know how you'd be able to achieve digital painting without it. Um, so basically what I'm doing here is I've got my, my Cintiq on my right hand basically and my keyboard on my left hand just on the desk there. And, um, and yeah, so we'll switch to the pen tool which the hotkey is P. Um, and we'll place the anchor point by pressing down just there. And as you can see, it creates a little square, so that means you've achieved what you've set out to do. Um, so I'm going to put another one here. Um, and you see how this line here sort of got, comes all the way around? That's essentially 180 degrees. So just so I've got a bit of control, I'll stick one here. 
and now it's gone 180 degrees almost in the other direction. Essentially, it's not always exactly 180 degrees. It's, you, you kind of have to play with it a bit to figure out exactly how you want it. But um, it's a bit of a rule of thumb, 180 degrees tends to work pretty nicely. Um, you can also, when you're adding the, the uh, nodes, you can click and hold and then drag it out and it'll create the curve as you go. So that can be quite handy if you want to save yourself going back. Um, oops. Save yourself going back and um, fixing up all the all the nodes as, as after you've already put them in. Um, and it can give you a better indication of what your overall outline will look like. So I'll just carry on here. Um, now that's curved because um, because this has got this node here has got a handle and it's pointing down the uh, the opposite way, obviously, as, as the other side. So with the pen tool selected, if you hold down Control, you can actually go to the little white um, uh, what should, what should we call it white cursor. Um, and actually what you don't want to do is the white cursor you want. Where is it? It should be Alt. There we go. You want to hold down the Alt key and you'll get this little upside down V sort of dude um, or half a capital N. And I'm sorry if you can hear the children next door playing, but apparently school has just finished and they've decided it's time to yell outside my office window. So if you hold down the Alt key, um, you can just grab one handle instead of grabbing both handles and then working sort of in opposites to each other. And then you can add that that in there. And then we just continue on with the pen tool here. So um, just letting go of the alt key, obviously. Uh, we'll add one here. See, that's continued from that one straight across there. I could have clicked and dragged that, but I'm going to go back and fix it afterwards. Um, and I'll click and drag this one so you can see. And then we'll create one on the tip of the toe. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delete that those handles and go back and fix it after the fact. Um, I just I generally do most of them after the fact, to be honest, I just find it easier that way. Um, and because I've used the pen tool a lot, I sort of, I know sort of where I should be placing them and it just does take a lot of practice. But after you do a few maskings, you'll understand where you should be at. Um, so I'm not gonna do any more clicking and dragging just for the sake of getting on with this video. I'll click in there and there and there. And now the other side of the toe knobby thing. Um, probably get away with doing a long one there. Back around. And we'll do one there and there. And then this big long one, we can get a nice smooth Bezier curve there. Um, and this curve sort of comes down and then back around. So because it's changing directions, it's going from this to this. So like an, like an over the top curve to an under the bottom curve. So we want to stick one here so it goes over to the top there and then it drops down and comes back up there one at the end of the toe one there and then we'll do that's basically 180 degrees there so we'll do that that and that um, all the way around there again so just clicking with the pen tool selected follow that one around to there and then there and there and there and there another 180 degrees Ooh, it might be a bit far, so I'm kind of going to go there. Um, stick another one on that side of the toe. And uh, this line's not very clean, so I'm going to fix this um, after the fact. But I kind of want this line to go up here and then come over the top of the the uh, the foot a little bit. So uh, what I'll do is I'll add one of those nodes there. And then one there, and then there you go, that's a nice circle, so just 180 degrees there. Over the top to there. Um, kind of change this direction a little bit, I want to capture that, so I'm going to put one there, and then there. And then we've got this nice smooth curve here, so I'm just going to use the one there, and then we're back to the start, and if you click on your initial point, it will close it, and you can see you get a, a um, outline um, without any of the nodes visible. So what we want to do now, is we want to make it visible again because we want to edit the handles. So if you hold down the control t uh, key with the pen tool selected um, and just click there, uh, click try to click on one of the corners. I think you could actually click anywhere on the line to be honest, but I'm clicking on a corner. Um, actually, I'm just going to create a new layer while I remember. Um, because this is going to be for a mask, I don't need, I don't want to mask out the line 
um, and then mess up that. I want to keep the line tool, uh, the line work for later. So using the control key, um, we can select that. You can tell it's selected because it's gone dark. And then if we hit Alt, we get the upside down little V thing, and it's just basically telling us that we're going to create a curve. So you see the both the handles are, they work opposite to each other. So you let go when you first drag it out, you will get handles that are working opposite to each other. And then if you hold down Alt again, just grab one of the handles, you'll see that you can edit it by itself. I'm just going to hold that one up there. Um, so obviously this doesn't quite reach all the way across. It's because this note here doesn't have any handles. So if we go into that and we just grab this guy here, drag it out, and then fix up that edge. Oops. I kind of want to pull it. This might need another node actually. Cause this, uh, yeah, that's probably what I want. My line art's not 100%, you know, a clean, perfect circle every time, obviously, because um, I'm not some awesome art dude. I'm just a normal guy. Um, all right, so here we go. And that's actually created quite a nice curve through there. So grab that. Sometimes you don't need to edit in each individual node. Um, sometimes you can just use them sim uh, symmetrically. All right, so grab this one here. And this time we're going to want to grab that handle there and pull it out. And then we'll grab this and drag it again. And then just pull this handle straight down here. Um, now there is a problem when you are editing the hand. I'll show you on this over this side. Um, when you're editing the handles individually. Um, okay, so say for instance I've done that and I want it to be this perfect S shape, but I need to edit one side, say for instance, to to capture the line correctly. If I move it the handle too far away from the, the straight um, to be straight with the other handle, you'll see that that line isn't great. And if that's not what you're going for, obviously, that, if that's what you're going for, then great. If it's not, then you just need to be aware that that's something that can happen. So we'll kill that one just by, if you do mess it up, just hold down the Alt key again over the node and click and it'll disappear. Um, I'm going to zoom in a touch and then grab this handle here. I'm actually wanting to make these toes a little bit um, a little bit sort of more bulbous than when I drew them. So they're going to be slightly different. Um, this note here, I actually want to move it slightly. So if I hold down the control key, I get the white cursor, which means I'm going to edit um, nodes, essentially I'll be able to grab them and move them anywhere. So I'm just going to click that there and drop them in. And then I might just make those a little bit more like that. Um, depending on how I feel, I might actually skip this part of the video because you might be like, hey man, I do not want to watch you go around and add nodes. You might already be have figured it out by now and just be like, get to the part where you're doing some masking. And that is fine because this is actually quite laborious. Uh, I do agree with you. It is not super fun, but it is highly, highly important if you're wanting to get that good line uh, around your masks. So it takes some patience, but in the end, it will save you. Oh, it will save you a lot of headaches. So um, bear with me. I need to move that one there a little bit, as you can see, just so I can get the tip properly. Um, I'll grab it from up here. Drag her down. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then um, hold down. This, I'm using the grab tool to grab around my canvas. That's um, space is your hotkey for that. Um, so just holding down the space key and clicking and dragging. So drag this side out here. You can see it's not quite reaching, so I want to make a handle on this side. And um, I'm making this this handle here go in line with the line leading up to the node. So um, I'll do that again. So I've dragged it out. I'm making it like that because I want that side of the, the line to remain as it is because it's already in the right place. I just want to move this side. So I'll grab that. The more you pull it out, obviously, the, the more extreme the shape is going to be. And the closer to the node, the softer the curve will be. So I'm just dragging it in like that. That looks awesome. Doesn't it just? 
Um, I'm just going to redo that one though. Try and work from left to right generally, just saves headaches. Um, left to right or um, counterclockwise is the way I generally work. It doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise. That's just the kind of guy I am. So hold down control, I'm going to move that one in a little bit. Grab this node and then move this node all as well. I think I was getting a bit out of control as I was doing these parts and not paying enough attention to where I was placing them. Um, so grab this one here, drag her out. Same here. Generally, you want to have some tunes on while you're doing this because it's kind of, like I said, it is kind of laborious depending on the complexity of the shape that you're trying to um, mask or, you know, um, create a selection on, it could take quite a long time. So you want to keep your mind from going completely insane. So I do recommend putting on some nice music, something highly relaxing or some banging beats to keep you, uh, keep your energy high as you go through, um, Maybe some scattle, that would be quite good. If you've played the game Hotline Miami, you'll be well and truly familiar with that musical artist. Um, all right, so going through on the feet, almost, almost past this, the feet are a little bit, um, a little bit fiddly, it turns out. Actually, I'm gonna fix this. If you want to grab one handle as well, you can actually just hold down control and use the, I think I said this earlier, but I'll remind you, hold down control and get the white cursor just so you grab the one handle as well. I'm going to create that as well, get this to be more like that. All right, we're going to bring this curve in like that. Uh, maybe I should add one. If you want to add a node, you can just press, uh, when you're on the uh, pen tool, uh, j you should just be able to click anywhere without without holding down a hotkey and then I'm gonna move that one in there with holding down the control key and selecting it and um, that's just gonna give me a little bit more control over this area yeah as you can see that is much better all right moving up again holding down alt Splitting that hand, uh, splitting that node into two handles, and then holding down Alt and just grabbing that one handle. And I do want to just give that a slight curve. Um, sometimes it's actually hard to see when you s grab the handles which way the curves are, so it doesn't hurt just to give it a bit of a spin. So check that you're going the right way. Grab this one here. So I want to keep this handle in line there because that's correct, and then just move this side up. And then we'll grab this one over here and pull them. Like move this node into the corner a bit more so I can have the curve. Oop. So I can have the just uh, undo there to go back. If you accidentally click away, um, move it into the corner there so I can have the curve come out away from his head a bit more and then come back in. So just undo and control to grab that node there and that node there to get a little bit more on point. And then we've got this curve here, which is correct. So um, I will zoom out just by holding down Alt and using my scroll wheel. That looks like that's correct. So um, if you hit escape, <laughs> it's disappeared. No, it hasn't. It is actually there. Um, and now we'll turn that into a selection. So what you want to do now is press a on your keyboard and you'll get your um, your white cursor. If you right click, um, you'll see a little bit down there, a fourth one down, you can make selection. Uh, Anti-alias will just mean it smooths it. You can feather it if you want. You do not want to do this generally if you're masking though. Um, and then these things here will only give you one option anyway. So click OK and you can see by the crawling ants that we have got the correct selection that we want. Um, and now, Generally what I'll do in a painting is I'll create a folder for each element and then maybe subfolders if I need to um, for for masks within the masks um, within masks sometimes. So um, I'll create a group there and then you can see here this is the uh, add layer mask 
If I do that, you can see the silhouette there is correct to the frog. Um, we can just change the name of that to frog. And this is an empty layer, which I'll drag in here, and I'll just call this base, because this is going to be the base color a little bit later on. Um, and we'll just select a nice um, yellow color. And then, yeah, there you go. You can see that that mask has worked correctly. And if you zoom in, you can see that these... Sorry it does that. I don't know why. I'm not used to using Windows. I've been using Mac for a long time. For some reason, when I switch between Windows, it gives me annoying warnings. Um, so, yeah, you can see that the curves are very accurate, very smooth, much smoother than what you would have gotten with a... Um, with the lasso tool, um, though the lasso tool can be very good for doing some quick edits here and there. Um, say for instance, I wanted to edit the mask a little bit. I might switch to the lasso tool, with the L key, and um, I've got the mask selected on that folder there. You actually see so you have the little white lines around the outside, and we could just sort of come in here and cut there, for instance, um, and then I will create a fill. If you use a black fill, it'll erase or essentially mask um, any area that you do not want to see. Um, and that is now a little bit flatter. Um, I don't think I want it that way though, so I'm just going to undo there. And um, yeah, that'll pretty much, uh, we'll finish that part of the tutorial there, but um, that's the first step uh, to that I take to basically doing do any painting. Um, is just a quick silhouette mask, and um, and then yeah, create a create a mask of the overall shape of the figure that I'm going to be draw uh, painting. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you keep following us along, we will have some more tutorials coming out uh, for the next steps in the process. Uh, so yes, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, you could like, favorite, and subscribe favorite? Do you favorite on YouTube? I don't think you do that. You could like it. You could subscribe. You could be like to your, your cool friends that you know, hey, there's a pretty useful tutorial on pen masking. And they'll be like, we, we don't care. We're not artists. And you'll probably realize that you should get cooler friends that are artists. I don't know. Maybe you have cool artist friends. I'm just rambling now. But really, thank you for watching. Um, and we'll catch you in the next tutorial.